you know, let's face it, when you think of classical music, it's not really an African-American face that comes to mind. There is a preconceived standard of how a string quartet, a serious string quartet, should look like. That stigma is there, that's, that's for sure. Sometimes we have to work double or triple than somebody else. To see people playing instruments that look like them, you know, it's invaluable for kids to see that. The Harlem Quartet is a string quartet that promotes diversity in classical music. And so we're two violins, a viola and a cello. Diversity in classical music is a very positive ideal because for so many years in this country, that ideal was a homogenous thought. By bringing in different cultural values, viewpoints, they are bringing an American ideal of melting pot to the stage. When we started, we were an all black and Latino group. But as the personnel needed to change for one reason or another, we decided the most important thing for us was to maintain our mission of diversifying classical music, but also the integrity and the excellence with which we wanted to perform our art form. What's a Jew doing in the Harlem Quartet? I've heard that a few times. And, uh, you know, I never really quite know what to say. It's a really strange question, but, you know, we all share a mission together and that's what matters. We're a diverse group and we all come from very different backgrounds. In New York you walk and you see in the subway people carrying instruments. No, not in Cuba. If, if, you, you, know, if you see a kid carrying a violin, that's really strange. So. <laughs> My mom, she passed away, but she was a great pianist, and my father, a conductor and composer. I started playing when I was six, but I started playing because when I was four, I saw Isaac Perlman on Sesame Street. You know, some things that are really easy for you are real hard for me. I simply liked the way his chin fit so perfectly in the chin rest, and it looked like the perfect instrument for a person to play. Melissa and I have a weirdly similar story that we both were watching Sesame Street. I saw Yo-Yo Ma playing. Yo, Yo-Yo Ma, my man! So I begged my parents for a cello. Whew. Both of my parents are musicians. They didn't really want their kids to be musicians, knowing sort of what the music world is and how hard it is. But you can't really stop it. You know, the drive is just too strong. I knew since I was a young boy I was going to be a violist, I wanted to be a violist, so I was going to make it happen. So it's pretty hard to, for anybody today to tell your parents, you know, I'm going to be a musician. They will get very worried, like, are you going to have money to survive? It's expensive to take up an instrument, any instrument, and it's expensive to get good at it. My violin was 20000 and my bow, I believe, was about 3000 so I think it's a good thing for school children to see that this is our full-time job. This is all we do. We mean to rehearse a piece that we've been playing for a while, Death and the Maiden by Schubert. And uh, we will be playing this very soon in a... What's the place? Bard College. Huh? Bard College. Can you say that again? Bard with a D. Bard College. Yeah, yeah that's a difficult uh, pronunciation there. And. Uh, we travel around the world performing concerts and also taking our music into inner city schools and just presenting to audiences that don't have easy access to classical music. One thing about being in the quartet is the traveling is quite something. I've seen places that I you know, would not have seen otherwise. Even parts of America that I thought that I knew and didn't know. Go, Missy, 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 I'm, I'm doing this. Okay. One of our most memorable times
times would be when we played at the White House for President Obama and his wife, First Lady Michelle. I just remember my knees were shaking and I didn't know what, I was speechless. So I think he said, very nice to meet you, and my answer was yes. <laughs> it's amazing traveling with a musical group. You really meet people differently. We had important mentors that would tell us, I don't think you would work in the European market. We, we knew that that meant not only he's talking about the quality of our playing, but just the, the image. We go there as you know, a group that can play some jazz, and then we sneak in there some classical piece to see, hey, we you know, have something to offer here too. Groups like the Harlem Quartet project a phenotype that when people see what is happening, or when they see who is performing, they begin to change their attitude about what that group is and what they are capable of doing. In a quarter mile, your destination will be on the right. Tomorrow we're performing at Bard College, which is a little less than two hours north of the city. And it'll be our first time performing there. They have a summer series, which is prestigious. The future of classical music lies in the idea of inclusion. And that is including everyone in the overall pastiche of what we call European art music. The Harlem Quartet reflects that idea and carrying it to an audience and then challenging that audience's idea about what it is they thought they were going to listen to and now what they are actually at the present, in that moment, hearing happen in the music. And it changes people's attitude. <laughs> 